So if you know anything about me and you followed me in the past, you know that the iPad Pro is my main computer and it's probably the only reason why I'm on YouTube to begin with. I started with the 2017 iPad Pro, then the 2018 redesign, then went to the 2020, the M1, and then finally the M2. And through that time, I've been able to accumulate and use a bunch of different accessories that I use on a daily basis. So in this video, we're gonna talk about my favorite iPad accessories. But before we do get started, if you did watch my iPhone accessory video, then you'll know we're doing a giveaway at each one of these videos. All you have to do is leave a comment and the winner of the last video is right here. So reach out to me on Twitter. Do not believe any of the people commenting and impersonating 9to5Mac or impersonating myself in the comments down below. The giveaway will only be done through Twitter. So again, congratulations. Definitely reach out to me on Twitter so we can get you arranged and get whatever product you want from that last video. And same thing applies for this video. Leave a comment down below to enter to win one product from this video. And we'll make sure to announce that winner when we start talking about MacBook accessories in the next video. But without further ado, let's talk about my favorite iPad accessories for 2022. Let's get into it. So to get started, let's quickly get the mainstays out of the way because there's a couple of accessories that are pretty much always on my iPad and my iPad Pro. So those three accessories have to be the Magic Keyboard, which to this day, even though it is a $350 accessory, it is the best accessory ever created in my opinion. Because with this accessory, even though yes, it is expensive, it makes your iPad Pro a completely different product. It goes from being a standalone tablet to being more of a computer-like situation, but also it turns it kind of into a console because it does have a nice stand and face-up position. So overall, the Magic Keyboard is, in my opinion, a must-buy if you are planning to use your iPad as your main computing device because it does give you the trackpad experience, it gives you the Magic Keyboard experience, it gives you that cool floating design, which now people are used to, but in the beginning was a showstopper and a conversation starter. So. The Magic Keyboard, I will recommend 100 times over for any iPad Pro user, even iPad Air users now that want to get play around with the Magic Keyboard, the 11 inch version. And then I always carry my Apple Pencil 2, but we'll talk about some alternatives a little bit later. The Apple Pencil 2 is $130. It's been around since 2018 with zero redesign, but for me, it's a mainstay for whenever I'm editing thumbnails and using Affinity Photo and things like that. And also, of course, note taking. And then with that note taking, I like to always have my Paperlike screen protector on there. I've had Paperlike for years and years now. Started with the 2018 iPad Pro and moved now onto this M2 iPad Pro. I know there's a bunch of different camps with Paperlike, but I like the resistance. I like the sound that it gives me. I like the protection that it gives me. Yes, sometimes it's a little bit fingerprinty, but again, it is a screen protector and it does bring two. But normally one Paperlike screen protector will last me until the next iteration of that iPad. So those are the mainstays when it comes to my iPad. But now let's talk about some other accessories that I use with my iPad and my iPad Pro that I've used for years. So let's start with some cases for the iPad itself. The first one I'm gonna talk about is this ultra slim case by Pitaka. You guys saw me mention Pitaka in my iPhone video as my favorite cases to use from a slim and durability standpoint. This is absolutely no different. And what I love about this case by Pitaka is that yes, it's very thin and only covers three sides. So it doesn't cover the fourth side of the iPad, but it does give you some rail protection. And what makes this thing so amazing is twofold. First off is that if you see on the inside panel, it adds an extra magnet in the very center of the actual case itself, which we'll touch on in a second because that does prove useful. But then secondly, it has pin connectors that kind of give you a pin connector pass through so you can still use it with your Magic Keyboard. So if you have a Magic Keyboard and you wanna have some side protection because with the Magic Keyboard you don't get any rail protection, put on this Pataka case and you'll be good to go because this does give you full protection. It closes with the Magic Keyboard flushly and it has a little divot in there to make sure you have space for your Apple Pencil 2 and it still charges your Apple Pencil 2 even though there's a lining of material in the aramid fiber on that rail where it wirelessly charges the Apple Pencil 2. So I consider that kind of like a standalone case or almost like a supplemental case because by itself, I don't know if people would use it even though I do, but if you don't own a Magic Keyboard and you wanna use your iPad as a tablet, then maybe skip out on that one and look into what ESR is doing, which is a good segue. So ESR, they're known to make some quality but also cost-effective products for a lot of Apple accessories iPad included. So with this ESR case, is very similar to Apple's Folio cases that they've had for years, but this one is less than half the price, same exact quality and materials, and it gives you a lot more color options and a lot more overall build quality options as well. So this one that I have is by ESR. It is their Slim Folio case, and if you guys can tell, it also does not have rail protection. They do have some that add rail protection, but I like the ability to just magnetically attach this one. There's no need to kind of pry it in and out of a case or anything like that. And then the last case is actually a twofold. It's a case and stand combination. So this is by a company called Moft. And if you guys know me by now, Moft is one of my favorite accessories because they're very utilitarian, very functional versus form. And this is no exception. So on the surface, this Moft just looks like a standard iPad, you know, like a rugged iPad case. It has that nice rubbery feel and material. On the sides, it is rubber and pliable, so you can kind of sneak in your iPad in there and make sure the lip goes over the actual screen itself. 
But then if you guys notice on the back of this, you actually get a whole stand. So this thing gives you a bunch of viewing ink. It lets you prop up the iPad like you would with a normal stand. It actually lets you float the actual iPad itself too. So this can be treated as not only a little stand for viewing angles to make sure that you're viewing your content correctly, but it can also be set up to actually be at eye level, which I love. So Moft is known for being multifunctional, multi-purpose, and known to kill a few birds with one stone. So that is the Moft float stand and case, which I love to have. And this is actually a great segue into the stand game. Now I did mention that that Pitaka thin case that goes on the iPad Pro has an additional magnet because that magnet that's on the back of there is meant to be used with their magnetic stand. So the same idea applies. It is a Aramid fiber stand. It is very sturdy and very heavy, has a Qi wireless charger on the bottom on the actual base itself to charge maybe AirPods or your phone whenever you need to. And then also with just that one magnet that's on the Pitaka case on the iPad Pro, you slap it on and it holds up the iPad Pro perfectly. And what I really like about this stand in particular is that at every 90 degree, it locks into place. So you're never guessing to see if your iPad is completely straight in both portrait or landscape mode. And then another great accessory that works with those magnets, even though these are separate companies, Moft and Pitaka, these products actually work like pretty well together. So Moft is known to make foldable stands, very origami style. Like I showed you guys before, I have the wallet, the MagSafe wallet for the iPhone, which I use all the time. This is the same exact concept minus the wallet. It is a magnetic, is a thin magnetic like piece of paper slash cardboard that folds up into different orientations to make sure you have a bunch of viewing angles on the rear of the iPad. So with so with that Pitaka case and that magnet, this just slaps on the back of the iPad and you get up to four different viewing angles. You get 15, you get a 30, a 45, and a 60 degree viewing angle on the iPad. So if you want to draw on it, if you're using it to view content, you can view it in portrait mode and landscape mode. This Moft accessory is a no brainer for a stocking stuffer for anybody that has an iPad. And also if you don't have the Pitaka case, they do include a magnetic sticker that you put on any iPad. And this works with literally any iPad in the lineup. You put that sticker on the back of the iPad or on a case on the back of that case for your iPad. So you don't have to put any adhesive on the iPad itself and then attach this via magnets and you're good to go. So that stand is by Moft. And then to round off the stand game, you guys always ask you about the stand that I have behind me in my back left. And that is the MagFlow by ChargeM Pro. So that one has been around for a while. It works very intuitively because it works purely on magnets. You do not need the Pataka case, even though it does add some more magnets in there for a little extra sturdiness and connectivity. But this is exactly what it looks like. It is a pro display XDR looking, studio display looking kind of base where you just magnetically attach your iPad and that's exactly what it does. It has full 360 degree rotation. You can rotate it backwards on its Z axis, kind of like what those square terminals do whenever you need to sign, whenever you're checking out of a retail shop or a restaurant. And I'm a big fan of this MagFlow case or MagFlot, depending on how you actually pronounce that. And that is again by ChargeM Pro called the MagFlow. So now let's talk about peripherals for the iPad. Cause depending on how you use your iPad, you know, the magic keyboard setup could be the only accessory that you need. Or if you have a desk setup or you like to bring a bunch of different accessories and you don't like the magic keyboard, but you want a Bluetooth keyboard, these are some idea starters for you. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the new M1 Satechi mouse. But this one by Satechi, I really, really enjoy. It's a lot sturdier than I thought. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more flimsy and a little bit lighter, but it's nice and heavy. It has a good travel, whether you're using it directly on a desk or you're using it on a mat itself. I like the design of it. I like how it's cool to the touch because it is made out of metal and it is chargeable with a USB-C port and it's honestly relatively cheap. So for the price, I think this is a great buy for anybody looking for a mouse, whether it is for the iPad or for your computer or for any other device that you need a mouse for. So that is by Satechi, their M1 mouse. And then if I move over, you can actually see a new mechanical keyboard. Now I've been trying to get into mechanical keyboards because people seem to really, really enjoy them and really love customizing them, really like playing with them, making it their own, making it look really cool. I'm slowly getting into the mechanical keyboard game, but this is by a company called Nufi or Nufi, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And this is their Air 60 model. It's a great mechanical keyboard. I'm still getting used to it because the key travel, it's its a lot. Like I'm so used to these very flat magic keyboard type keyboards where I barely have to touch the key for it to actually recognize and work versus with a mechanical keyboard, I feel like I'm lifting my hands and lifting my fingers a little bit more, but I'm getting a lot better with it. And this mechanical keyboard is really, really nice. You can connect it via a USB-C cable. You can connect it wirelessly. You can connect it to up to three different devices. I love the color aesthetic. I love this pastel color palette. Um, I'm just a big fan of this Air 60 by Nufi. They do have an Air 75 now, which I'm not 100% sure what the differences are, but I'll leave this one linked down in the description below if you guys do want to check it out. And it works great with the iPad Pro, especially for scripting videos like this one. And then if we continue on with the peripherals, I have two different USB-C hubs that I want to recommend to you guys. One of them is a plug and play that just attaches to the actual iPad itself. One of them is kind of like a flush plug and play that has just like a few emergency ports that you guys would need. So it has... So it has a 3.5 audio port, it has a USB-C Type-C 
port to charge up to 60 watts. It has an SD and micro SD card slot. It has a USB A 3.0 port and then also a 4K 60 hertz HDMI port. So this one will have everything that you need in a small form factor like the headphone jack, the HDMI port, you know, the USB-C, the USB-C port, and it even brings a little extender because if you guys use something like the Bitaka case or you have any other case that kind of like surrounds that USB-C port, sometimes this won't sit flush. So they, Satechi thought of that and they added a little extender to make sure that it fits in any situation. So that one's called the USB-C Mobile Pro by Satechi. Highly recommend it. And it fits, you know, that Apple aesthetic, that aluminum, that cool to the touch. Very, very premium, very pristine. And the next USB-C hub is if you need something a little bit more robust. Now this one is also by Satechi. I've had this one for a very long time. This is kind of like their on the go one and it has 10 different port options. And what I like about the design is that the actual USB-C dongle that you plug into this itself is actually inside of the hardware itself. It has a little cubby or a little cave in there which you slide this into. You plug one side into the USB-C hub, the other side into the actual iPad itself. And then you have a USB-C port for power pass through which supports up to 90 watts. You have a USB-C port for data pass-through, which supports up to five gig speeds. You have an HDMI 4K60, or you have a VGA port, an ethernet port, and then two USB-A 3.0s, and then you have a micro SD and an SD card slot, just like the other one. So if you need something a little bit more robust, something that you need a few more ports in, maybe you need an ethernet port, maybe you use a hard drive as well, and you wanna do some data pass-through, this is the way to go, also by Satechi. And now let's quickly talk about what I used to power all this. Now, this is also by Satechi. They did not sponsor this video. They just have a lot of great products, which I highly recommend. And everything's gonna be listed down in the description down below if you guys do wanna check it out. These are great stocking stuff for us. This is great for holiday deals and holiday presents, so I highly recommend them. And most of these companies are having Black Friday deals, which you guys should take advantage of. But this charging brick is, again, by Satechi. It is a 108-watt USB-C 3-port GAN charger, and it has three USB-C out ports, and they are smart ports. So if you just plug one in, then it gives you 100 full watts of power which is more than enough to charge your iPad Pro because iPads right now they can only max charge at 33 watts so even this 108 one is a little bit overkill but I like to have it because I'm able to charge my iPhone maybe my MacBook as well so if you do one port it's 100 watts if you do two ports it does 60 watts plus 45 or it does 88 watts and a 20 watt charge so if you need to charge your iPhone and a laptop you can do that and if you do all three ports it can do 45 30 30 58, 30, 20, 65, 20, 20. So it really just depends which devices you have on there. And what I like about it is that it's a smart GAN charger. So you never have to worry about overheating, overcharging, or maybe putting too much power into a certain device, you'll be good to go. And then I wanted to name some miscellaneous items that maybe don't fit in these must have categories, but they're just nice to have. The first one is if you're looking for a budget Apple Pencil alternative, there are some out there that work extremely well. So I've tested out a couple of Pinovo Apple Pencils, which is an Apple Pencil alternative. They have some cheap ones that range from $25 and they have some more premium ones that are about $45, $50. And they each kind of take away or add a little bit more functionality or a couple more features. But the one I have is the A4 Pro by Pinovo. It is this black colorway and that's another thing. You can get them in different colors most of the time and they all charge via USB-C. And they still all attach magnetically. They just don't charge wirelessly but you pretty much get all the function that you would get from the Apple Pencil 2 in these Pinovo pencils. You know, you have your touch sensitivity, the tilt sensitivity, pressure sensitivity. Uh, Hover does not work with these. So if you do have an M2 iPad Pro, Hover does not work with these Pinovo pencils, but I'll definitely link some budget alternatives down below that I highly recommend that I've used in the past. Because again, 130 bucks for an Apple Pencil that's four years old now at this point, going on five years, is a little bit of a ripoff in my opinion. And then from a controller slash gaming standpoint, we have the Moga IP5i Plus. So this is an MFI controller that I did mention on the iPhone video as well, but it works great with an iPad. Exactly what you would need when gaming with things like 2K, Call of Duty, or any other MFI supported game like Fortnite, if it ever does come back, it'd be great to have. But it also works with your Xbox. So if you are an Xbox user, this will work with your Xbox more than fine. And it has everything that you would need from a gaming controller for an iDevice. And then the last thing that I'm gonna mention is Paperlike's cleaning kit. So it's a really nice and portable, easy to use cleaning kit that you can use for any iDevice. It doesn't just have to be the iPad, even though I use it primarily for the iPad, but it's a spray and microfiber cloth in one. You don't need to have a microfiber cloth and then a spray bottle. It all comes in one package. So all you do is you spray, you turn it over, and then you wipe down the screen and you're good to go. So that is by Paperlike. Highly recommend that one. If you guys do wanna check that one out, everything is gonna be linked down in the description below. But that is gonna do it, everybody. Like you saw, there's a bunch of accessories for the iPad, and this is just the surface. There's so many accessories. Just go on Amazon, type in iPad, and you'll find a bunch of stuff that'll probably fit your aesthetic, fit your workflow, fit your productivity tasks. These are just the ones that I use and I've been using, maybe not on a daily basis, but I use them very often, especially while traveling. Just for the most part, I do stick with the Magic Keyboard and then some of these auxiliary accessories like the USB-C hubs, but when I'm not and I'm using it at my desk and I have my iPad desk setup going and maybe I'm editing a video in LumaFusion, I like to have 
my keyboard, my mouse, I like to have a trackpad, I like to be able to use all my different accessories. So the iPad, it can be a one trick pony or it can do a bunch of different things at once and that's why I love it. But like I did mention, we are doing a giveaway. All you have to do to enter is comment down below and then I'll announce the winner of this video in the next video, which should be a MacBook accessory video. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Definitely say subscribe for that. And the only way that I'm contacting the winners is via Twitter. I will not be announcing the winner in the comments below. So do ignore all of those comments of people impersonating 9 to 5 mac and impersonating myself because those are not true. I will never ask you for money and I will never ask you to pay for shipping. So keep that in mind. All these giveaway items will be 100% free to you and will be communicated with you via Twitter. But if you guys didn't make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below and leave a comment down below of what your favorite accessory from this video was so we can kind of talk about that. And also comment down below maybe an accessory that I missed that I should check out for a future video. Always curious to know. But if you guys want to watch some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, and macOS, click on one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. I'm out of here. Peace.